Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a Once Human update video, so let's crack on with it. So for this video, I'm going to go and show you guys the information that's been posted on the Discord. So this is the patch notes that we have, um, and the updates in, this is the stuff that we have now, and there's a few things that are going to be coming with this as well. So the new thing we have here is new animal rotching feature. And I'm going to just show you guys a quick clip on that right now. So I'm going to briefly show you guys the creature stuff. This is after we've tamed a boar. To tame a boar, basically just get it down to a low HP. I got I was down to about 25%. And then we tranquilize it, we'll get knocked down. And you just pick it up like any item in the game. To be able to do this stuff, you're going to be... Uh, in the Momedics, you're going to go to Logistics, scroll all the way down to Transcendence 4, and you're going to see Animal Capture and Animal Taming. And you are going to need your Tranquilizer Throwing Needles, as well as your Animal Trough with some food in it, uh, and some water as well, so bear that in mind. Once you've acquired that and you've acquired your boar, build yourself an enclosure like we have here, and you're going to see your boar in the first tab. Uh, tools and there's ours. So we got a great B boar that is a female and it's got some characteristics that will unlock at certain taming levels uh, So we can't see those yet. So let's place this down and you'll be able to place this down Like a placeable. So we're gonna pop it right there. Livestock created and There we have there we have it. We've got ourselves a boar Lovely fellow. So bear in mind that people can still shoot this or at least it, we, we, I tested this out while we're in a hive um, so yeah, bear that in mind. You can see that, that it's eating. I believe how it works is that it will, um, build tamingness over time. So you just got to look, look, look after it and you will be able to build this tamingness up and grab its different characteristics and so on and so forth. So when we're reading through the information that they've given us over here, we've got most animals encountered in the open world include deer, wolves, sheep, wild boar, bears, rabbits, and crocodiles can be captured and brought back to your territory to be raised. Even more animals will be made available in the future. Each animal has different habits and characteristics. You must build special housing for each type of animal and provide the appropriate food. Once in an, animal, uh, an animal is tame enough, you'll be able to collect skins or meat from them. Some animals are aggressive by nature and can even help you defend your territory against deviant invasions. An upcoming September update will even allow you to breed animals to obtain rare and unique critters, which is pretty cool. So definitely the update in, in uh, September, we're going to be giving now uh, the breeding a good go. Um, revamped fishing system. Since launch, we've received a lot of valuable feedback concerning the fishing minigame. Players have reported being unable to catch fish or confusion regarding the fishing controls. We understand where you're coming from, so we've revamped some aspects of the fishing system. The waiting time has been reduced and we've increased the number of fish each fish tank can hold. We've also added lots of rare new fish types. The new fishing minigame is a battle between your stamina and the fish's energy. The tension on the fishing line is displayed in the center of the screen. You must reel in the fish as much as possible while keeping the fish line from snapping. When the fish runs out of energy, you have successfully caught it. Some small fish can now be used as bait. Large and ferocious fish prefer small fish to common bait which is pretty cool. I love that you can go and get like some freshwater fish, tiny fish, and then go get the bigger fish. Personally, the previous system of fishing I thought was a bit dull, but uh, I'm glad that they're looking at this and addressing it. this as the fishing event for me was the most common event that you will ever see. So if you're if you enjoy fishing, this is pretty cool. Optimize the fish types. Reduce the waiting time required when fishing or reeling in fish, which is nice. So you're just going to be able to blast through even quicker now. Added new rare fish, the northern pike, the sunfish, the rainbow trout, 
add various other, I'm not going to go through all that, but they're there. Um, optimized fish tanks to allow them to hold multiple fish at once. Each fish tank can hold up to eight fish, depending on the size of the fish. So I'm guessing if you get just an absolute whopper of a fish, <laughs> you maybe put like one or two in. But if you get some some tiny tiny little ones and uh, you can you can get up to eight in there which is pretty cool i like that i really really like that i'm not sure this is pretty cool so they've, they've put up the um just a basic sort of building structure and they're showing off some of the fish here which is pretty cool indeed i do like this so if you're a big fisher out there you can set up your little fishing home and and uh <laughs> decorate it with all kinds of fishing fishing stuff new wilderness game mode open time every th tuesday thursday and saturday at 4 20 p.m server time i do not like time gated events that are certain times and they do this a lot especially with the pvp ones i think pvp ones should be a lot they should be everywhere throw it let let people get mods that aren't one per season which is just ridiculous um and stop with the 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 time gated stuff it's it's infuriating for me personally let me get, let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think is this cool twice a week at 4 20 on a tuesday on a thursday uh, i'm personally not a big fan but hey here we are Location, a random settlement in Chalk Peak, Lone Wolf Waste, and Blackheart region. Rules, this game mode lasts for 20 minutes. Sproutless will start spawning five minutes after the event starts and you can be, uh, and can be obtained through various mining methods. <laughs> Metas in the event zone will be in PVP teams during the event. The more Sproutlets you carry, the more Sprout uh, sprout lit what, whatever that is uh, you will drop when defeated metas can exchange sprout whatevers at a one-to-one -one conversion rate with nissa in the camp which it would be great if the mods weren't seasonal right you know what i mean like come on sort it out here we go so ancient ones trial people have reported seeing the ancient one descend upon the highest mountain in chalk peak the ancient one's trial awaits any meta who can climb to the top of that tall mountain board the ancient one and face a trial that will test your determination and courage metas who earn the ancient one's recognition shall receive lots of rewards call upon your most trustworthy companions and attempt at the ancient one's trial together mod conversion mod conversion is unlocked when you reach level 40 in the novice season or when you enter a non-novice season the mod conversion function can be accessed from upper right corner of the mod backpack you can convert six unenhanced legendary mods into a legendary mod with a main attribute of their choice which is pretty flipping cool mods obtained via conversion may contain basic suffixes um which is okay if you four of of the six mods used for the conversion contain the same suffix the con uh, converted mod is guaranteed to have that suffix this is just assuming that the converted mod is able to have their suffix for example lucky seven cannot have a precious suffix and embers cannot have the frost vortex suffix okay i like that so that they're stopping the randomness i think um and you're able to sort of try and craft your mod that you're kind of looking for mod mod grinding was one of the most horrible brain dead spam 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 sort of things i mean we would sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours farming the same boss over and over and over and again just to try and get the mod and then hopefully get the mod with the right with the right prefix and suffix it was it was it was it was it was horrible i'm gonna be honest here the converted mods attribute levels depend on the attribute levels of the six mods used for the conversion which is pretty pretty interesting actually we are in game right now how about we have a little see if we can have a look at this 
So we're in the game and there is a mod that I'm going to try and craft here. So real quick, all we're going to do is we're going to go to our mod section, go to mod conversion, and here we are. Something you want to take note of is that you're going to need three mods of the same mod to unlock the mod you want to craft. So what I mean by that is you need to have gathered three mods uh, somehow, somewhere, farming silos, whatever it is, to be able to craft what you're looking for. So for example, I wanted to craft a momentum up. I got one from a narcotic, but I never actually went and farmed momentum up myself. Um, I farmed up other stuff. So I, I still need to go get two more. Probably gonna get that done at some point. But uh, the mod that we're gonna be crafting right now is going to be a ferocious charge. So I'm gonna craft a ferocious charge. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna throw in some modifications uh let's see here so i definitely want that in there maybe Can we unlock that let's throw that in let's see if we've got any more with crit there's another one please get, please have enough so i think you need four of the perk that you're looking for ah we have three that is so unfortunate that is really unfortunate um, let's just throw in some random stuff then that uh, I don't really care about. Let's put that in there. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. We've we've got we've got some stuff here. So you can see here that uh, we can we can choose talent because um, we've got four of them in there. Violent is what we want. We got three violence in there. Um, which is rather interesting. So I'm going to choose random suffixes. Let's just see what we get here. Okay. Uh, exchange. It's going to cost us 20k. Consume the selected mods. And we got weak spot. Purple as well. Uh, not exactly what I was looking for, but hey, here we are. <laughs> Uh, so that's the new uh, mod conversion feature. So uh, that would be the mod conversion feature here that we just checked out, um, which is pretty cool stuff. Definitely, definitely a really cool change. And I actually really like that. Uh, it, it makes makes farming mods a little bit more interesting now. Uh, next, we have controller support. They've, they've added the ability for you to use controllers, which is really cool. I know uh, uh, some of my friends have wanted to use controllers and they couldn't. So definitely a really cool thing to see cross character sharing for paid content i don't know why this wasn't a thing uh <laughs> glad it's in the game um is now officially available this this should this most definitely should have been a thing like, let's just be honest here um next we have server invitations special invitation codes are now available if a server is full players already on the server can find their special invitation code on their player info screen which can be accessed via the menu. They can then share this special invitation code with their friends. Friends who receive the special invitation code can use it to enter the server even if it's already full. Very cool. I, more games need to do that. That is a, such a cool thing to see. Seasons. Some servers will soon be changing seasons for the first time. The following is some useful information regarding the once human season stuff. Definitely a very important thing. So let's crack into this um, and try and uh, get a good in-depth feeling of, of what's going to happen. What are scenarios and seasons in One's Human? What is the game like in the long term? We want to offer different survival experiences. So the game has a little something for everyone. We also want to keep updating the game so it's always exciting to play. That is why we've chosen to include multiple scenarios in the game. A scenario is a gameplay theme of a server. Once Human's global launch initially offered two scenarios, with Manibus focusing on PvE and Evolution's call centered around PvP. In September and October, we're bringing a special events featuring new scenarios content. September's scenario will invo uh, involve faction-based PvP, while October's will bring a cooperative PvE scenario with a new map and temperature-based survival mechanics. Very interesting. Also in the works 
are a scenario with unrestricted PvP and longer season cycles as well as a perpetual scenario. Furthermore, we plan to release at least four new scenarios every year. Very, 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 very interesting stuff there. I'm not going to put my two cents on that uh, just yet. Seasons refer to individual cycles and progress with scenario. The duration of each season varies according to the scenario. Each season will also be split into multiple phases based on the scenario's features. In-game content will be gradually unlocked as the server progresses through the season, ensuring that you always have something new to enjoy. So the drip feeding of content will continue. Once all the scenario content is available and the season reaches the transitional phase, you can sign up for the new scenario while keeping your gains from the current scenario. Of course, you can also choose to continue playing and completing objectives on your current server until the transitional phase ends. Currently, the transitional phase is set to last for four weeks. That's our vision for the game. Wish. Uh, which we hope will bring your you multi multi-factored and consistently engaging experiences not a big fan of the uh, drip feeding of content but uh, here we are let's see how they do that pushing forward if they're going to drip feed content it has to be a whopping amount of content each drip fed like each little droplet of content that they give us but yeah, that's just me let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below i personally think the game in a, as a whole the guy the, is pretty cool i i enjoy the fights i uh the pve content i enjoyed leveling up the building all that sort of stuff is really really cool just the the trip feeding there was some weeks that it was just dry it was boring there was practically you play for a day for a few hours and you're done uh, it, it was it was pathetic to say the least how do i sign up for the new scenario you can sign up for new scenarios during the final phase of the current scenario once you do so you can start your new journey right away Alternatively, you may choose not to sign up immediately and continue exploring and fighting in your current server. So you can do this right now, get ready for the new scenario and uh, head on over. Uh, your current server will be closed and your character will be returned to the eternal land when you can continue playing or sign up for the new scenario at any time. So they're going to boot you off the server in four weeks. So you've got four weeks to do what you've got to do. Um, if you're ready to go, then... Uh, all power to you and good luck out there better when scenarios is, uh, when a scenario is over does that mean i will lose my in-game progression very important let's have a look here no it does not we value the effort and time you put into your our game even when a scenario ends or you exit a scenario midway you'll be able to keep the rewards you've earned there are a few rare exceptions including scenario specific items or momentic items however to ensure that each scenario offers a self-sufficient experience and to allow all players to enjoy the game regardless of their progress we have the following rules in place character and uh, you can you can take the following content from the associated scenarios. So character and cosmetics, materials, um, that includes Starcom. Uh, th th this list here, you guys can read that. Uh, important in-game progress content. That's a uh, blueprint, furniture formulas, and building house blueprints. Very important. Seasonal items. So your honor shield patterns and all that sort of stuff. Friends, uh, your friends and, and, and uh, fr uh, group chats and all that. Task completion progress and event progress materials these are all what you keep uh, and you can transfer the following content into your depot into the eternal land uh, before the next season begins you can bring some resources along with you on your new journey so that includes weapons and armors regular resources deviations uh which is huge because uh there's I imagine you find a 5-5 deviant that you really bloody want and yeah you know what i mean so i'm glad that, that that's something you can bring some of them calibration blueprints energy links okay very interesting map exploration progress uh, character level xp scenario core gameplay items special uh, specialized items crafting using mimetic specialization these these things here you cannot do anything with their season base once you leave your, your scenario done 
done so. So very cool. Main thing I want really wanted to see was the deviations. Um, how to bring items from the eternal land. I think I'm just going to do a video on that stuff. Uh, there's a new shop that's arrived with these teddy bears and some new hairstyles and makeups. Um, the Pyro Glide Vehicle Cosmetic, which is this here, is a Cyclex Skull Fashion Set Legendary Quality and Primordial Flame Weapons Cosmetic. Uh, will be available on August the 16th. Open the Lightforge Loot Crate for a chance to get these limited edition collectibles. Um, so you get this cool i mean it looks sick i am definitely gonna try to get this it just looks awesome 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 stuff um a new event the wilderness express starts on august 15th um pretty much uh prime wars gameplay optimizations territory purifications reduce the deviant hp and damage they deal to buildings um stuff like that Uh, some other adjustments, territory constructions, uh, deviant optimizations, uh, and stuff like that. So nothing super, super major. I'm not going to read all through this. It's huge. I mean, look at this list. We'll be here all day. So I just wanted to go through some of the major things that I, I, I briefly saw through our little um, Discord update patch notes here. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with some of the stuff that they're showing off here. And that will conclude this video. I know it was a little bit long. There's so much information in this patch notes. I tried to keep it as brief and short as possible, uh, but I'm definitely sorry for the, the length on this one. Either way, I hope it was informative and I hope you all enjoyed it. Chisel for joining me. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all on the next one.